Many families of Hamas hostages not just waiting for answers, they are demanding them. And they are receiving support from other families whose worst fears have already been realized. With the ground operations expected to expand in the war between Israel and Hamas, the families of hostages are even more on edge, as you can imagine. And that includes one family who tells ABC News no one notified them of this new phase. ABC's James Longman has their story in tonight's Prime Focus. Hello. Hello, hi. Hey, hi. I'm James. Hi, James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, James. My name is Olit. Olit Meyer has become two people since the October 7 Hamas attack. Hi, nice I'm to see you I'm happy that you are here. She's a mother, sick with worry for a son in captivity. I have a big hole here, mm. inside. Mm. I'm worried, I'm afraid. He says... Oh, uh, and she's a fighter, a campaigner. Bring Almog back home. Trying to force her government to prioritise bringing him home. Both roles are new to her, but they require all her energy. I'm in a loop in my life. My life changed, got changed. Once I'm uh, happy, when I'm, I'm, I, I smile and I'm, uh, you know, uh, laughing. And sometimes I'm, I'm crying, you know, it's, uh, it's mixed feelings. Her 21-year-old son, El Mog, was at the Nova Music Festival when terror struck. He called home, panicked. He said, open TV, uh, the army closed the party, there are rockets and shooting all over, I'm hiding, I don't know what's going on, I'll call you every half an hour, mom, I love you. This and was the last phone call. The last phone call. When he said, I love you, did you know something serious was happening? Yes. This video circulating online appears to show captives held by Hamas, including El Mog, his hands covering his face. Uh, Arid's brother Aviram is here for support, an uncle struggling to make sense of the senseless. He calls her Mamo. Mamo. He mom. But this time he called her Mam. Yes. I knew exactly that I'm, I'm in tra a big trouble. Mm. That's what I understood. Yes. Because Mamo is when he called me. Mamo, how are you? For Orit, her son is all around her, reminding her to be strong. In his spirit, is here, mm -hmm. you know, he's here. I feel it, I feel him everywhere. Mm -hmm. In the house, and I know he will come back. Mm -hmm. I know he will come back. <laughs> but for this family, and many like them, these personal traumas must also be public calls to action. Many of the hostage families feel let down by the Israeli government, who they say has not prioritized rescuing their loved ones. According to the IDF, more than 200 people are still believed to be in Hamas captivity. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu says the hostages have not been forgotten. Along the highway, the pressure campaign is everywhere. Photos of Al Mog follow his mother and uncle to the hostage family center. The group, the Hostages and Missing Families Forum, has escalated its push to get the hostages freed, and it seems to be working. So the family have come to this community hub, which is where relatives of the hostages assemble to be with each other, to support each other, to get advice, to meet officials. But these families, they're going through something extraordinarily difficult. They're grieving, they're in pain, but they're also now campaigners, campaigners to put pressure on the international community to try and get their loved ones home. Former ambassadors, social workers, lawyers and doctors, a world of volunteers offering real help to families in need. And among them, extraordinarily, families of the dead, offering to console those who don't yet know the fate of those they love. My name is Eli, I'm married to Aouva, and our daughter was uh, murdered in this horrible party or festival. Since this horrible Shabbat, uh, our life was... Uh, we are in a wreck, you know, we are devastated. We have to wait four or five days until the government let us know that uh, they found my daughter. I only allow my 
mind to get attached in details very rarely because mm. it's it's too it's too, much. it's too much. So I'm trying to be here. We brought my daughter's dog. Ali tells me his daughter Adi begged him for a dog after Argentina's World Cup win. A fan of Lionel Messi, she named him Leo. He sits patiently, waiting for an owner who will not return. My daughter is this part of it. So I cannot look at picture, I cannot uh, go to her room. It's too, it's like a stab, you know, something very unconceivable. So it's precious to us now, more than ever. Being here with Leo beside him is Elie's tribute to his daughter, a way to deal with his grief, a way to give her death meaning. Everyone in the world should ask himself a serious question. Do we appreciate life? Are we worthy to live life that is full of love and prosperity and caring? Or we should let evil forces to take over us. I choose life. I you're choose doing, life. You're, and you're doing your daughter's memory. Yeah. A tremendous service. Yes, yes. It's incredible. That's her spirit. Yeah. She solved everything by her presence, by her tenderness. For Orit, this community hub is what she needs to fight for her son, but also process the pain. They understand my feelings. They give me a hug. They, 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 they give me everything I need everything I need here and I can meet people here and I can cry with them and they laugh with them and they understand me. That, that's what I need now. Support is so important. Our thanks to James Longman. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.